Well, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to build another solar lantern. This is going to be the same size as the one we just did with the with the uh, glass crystal in. This one here is going to be a little different. It's going to have a circle in the middle. And in the middle here, we're going to put a crystal ball. The crystal ball is about three inches in diameter. It's solid glass. It has all the prisms on it. So it should be a really interesting project. Uh, we're making it a little bit difficult here. We're going to make a little thin stripe down around here. Uh, we're going to put some little colored squares in here. And other than that, it's, it's pretty straightforward. This will, I'll show you how we're going to do this little area right here. Uh, I made a pattern for these guys right here. Uh, and it's right here. I'll show you what it looks like. And we did it the same way as we did on the circle one where we used our tracing paper and we've created the pattern. So you notice I marked some arrows here. Uh, I want the, uh, the grain of the glass to go all the same way when we put this in here. So uh, this actually will fit in here like this. So uh, we're going to do something else too. We're going to, uh, we, we didn't take the form apart that we used for that last one because it's six and seven eighths. And this one here is going to be six and seven eighths. So I just kept the same uh, form that we had before. So if you're interested in trying something like this, uh, you want to write these down. It's uh, six and seven eighths inches wide. The header is one and a quarter inches. And then from here down to here is eight inches. So uh, if you want to draw something out like that, you can give it a, give it a try. Uh, you can you could leave out some of these more difficult areas here if you wanted to. Uh, these legs right here on these down these around the circle here, uh, they're getting a little bit small. I notice this one here when I drew it, it's not quite even. So we'll straighten that up when we uh, when we get ready to cut the glass. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go offline and we'll go ahead and we will uh, uh, put this inside our form. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to take our rotary cutter here. If you if you're not familiar with this, I'll show you how it works. Uh, it's primarily used in cutting uh, fabric for quilters, but it works great. My wife gives me all her old blades, which work great on paper. And I'm going to come in here. I use a felt tip pin to uh, represent the came here. And what it does, if if you cut right in the center of those lines, it'll pretty much represent uh, the uh, heart of the came. So. And I'm talking about when I talk about the heart of the cane, it's this part right here, the back part of it. OK, so uh, by by using the felt tip pin, you kind of get an idea how to do that. Uh, on my pattern, you notice I only have these four pieces. The rest of this is all gone. The reason for that is we're going to cut and stack this all out here. And if you've followed my other videos, you'll know that I just uh, start out and I'll go ahead and pick a pick a size, cut it, and then we'll make some another size to, to match up with it. Uh, so anyway, I did add a little bit of uh, length here for these these pieces here, the width uh, over the border here, because I wanted to make this a little bit longer. If I would have stayed with this same size up here, this would be exactly square, and I didn't like the way that looked, so I moved that on out to uh, give us a little uh, better look. So I'm just going to take and I'm going to put my ruler on here, and I'm just going to take my rotary cutter here, and I'm just going to cut it straight down here. And that takes and cuts it just like that. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to turn this around. I'll get it in here. Put it up here. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm cutting this pattern out. I'm going to take this and I'm going to use a glue stick. And I'm going to stick it right down in between our frame that we already have. And I'll come back and show you that when I get, when I get ready to put that in. So there's that. I can leave this one long on the end here, but I do want to cut this one off because this is our header. I want to start out at the top here. I don't want it to, to get too big as we go along. And like I've said before, since we're doing cut and stack, if it starts to get out over our, our drawing area here, don't worry about it because we're only interested in getting to this point right here. And I'll show you as we move along how we're going to do that. So we'll come up here and we'll put this right in here, right there. And we'll just take and cut that off. Uh, if you haven't used a rotary cutter, they're really nice. They're, they're a lot nicer than using scissors and trying to, to clip things and get them straight. The only thing, a word of safety here, they do have a safety guard on them. You slide it back and forth to, to protect it from the blade. The blades are super sharp, 
So whatever you do, don't go running your fingers across them. So always take and put your your safety guard back across it so you don't accidentally pick it up by the head and uh, cut yourself. So uh, they're not very expensive. You can get them at all kinds of stores uh, uh, that carry any kind of fabric or craft stores. And they're just called a rotary cutter. They make one that's bigger than this and they make one that's smaller than this. But they work really nice and, and they give you a nice smooth cut. And uh, so if you uh, haven't got a, a rotary cutter, you might look into maybe picking one up. Uh, these rulers that I'm using, these are plastic rulers. They're used for quilting also. My wife is a quilter. And uh, some of these uh, I inherit from her. This one here got dropped and broke on the end. So uh, uh, they end up out here in the shop. So uh, they work really nice. They have about an eighth inch wall right here. So when you're using your rotary cutter, your rotary cutter just rides up against it. And I also use these uh, when I'm cutting uh, glass. I use my, it works great along the edge to uh, uh, hold your glass cutter so it doesn't move in or out. So for instance, if you're cutting something, this happens to be a three inch wide one. If you're cutting something three inches wide, this works perfect. You just set it in against your glass and cut it and you got a three inch wide piece. Plus whatever the, uh, the uh, glass cutter adds to it from the, from the little legs on the side of the cutter. So anyway, we'll go offline. Um, I'll get this uh, get this ready to go and I'll show you how we're going to glue it in there and then we're get ready to build this one here so uh, we'll be back in a minute all right well, we're back okay so this is the form that we used before on the other uh, solar lantern the one with the uh, glass crystal in it and uh, so now what we're going to do we're going to take our pattern here since this one's going to be the same size six and seven eighths and we're going to just take a glue stick right here just turn this over and uh, we'll take and glue this up here. So this is kind of cheating. So this way we don't have to build another form. Uh, if you're just turned in, if this is the first time for you to watch one of my videos, you haven't watched any of the other ones, uh, take a look at one of the other ones and shows you how we, uh, how we make the little form and what it's made out of. So we'll just take this and we'll turn it over here and we'll set it in here. Make sure you get it down straight. We want it to fit. We want it to fit in here nice and smooth and straight. There we go. Take some time to make sure you get that where you want it. Here we go. Right there. So that'll give us a little bit of a plan to build on. Uh, so I'm going to just take a piece of masking tape across the back here to hold that down for, for, for safety here. So we don't have that getting away from us and moving. So there's our plan for our new one. I'll show you what the crystal ball looks like. It's, uh, it's made of solid glass. Uh, it should give us a really, really interesting uh, end result. Here's what it looks like. It's going to hang in the center here, right like this. And we'll use our, our um, 50 pound monofilament fishing line. It will create a line to come up here, right up, it'll come up here on the uh, inside of the, uh, the plate that we're going to use to put our solar lights on. And this will uh, just hang freely in there. So this ought to be really pretty. This is, has a really, really nice look to it. And it'll pick up all the lights as the sun shines through it. So these particular solar lights are just as pretty during the daytime as they are at night because they have the crystal, which gives a lot of reflections. So uh, you'll see them dancing around on the walls there uh, in your home. So that's what we're going to put in there. The uh, six and seven eighths, if you here again, if you're for, uh, new with the uh, uh, new with uh, watching some of my videos. The reason we came up with that particular size, we're going to run three of these solar lights in the top of them. These are the tops off the garden stakes that you buy for the garden. Uh, they sit on a triangle like this. It'll have three sides to it, just like some of my other solar lights. So uh, that's how this we came about this size right here. And uh, so that'll kind of bring you up to speed on what we're doing here since we took a couple of shortcuts. Okay, so I'm going to go offline. I'm going to cut some you came to go around this. Going to cut some H came to go across here 
and uh, we'll get ready to cut up some pieces of glass and put in here. So we'll be back in a minute and I'll get all that cut up and we'll have a whole bunch of stuff to show you when we get back. All right, well, we're back. Okay, so I got a bunch of pieces all cut up here now and uh, did a little bit of a trial run, make sure that they're all going to go where we want them to go. So uh, across the top of you here, uh, you notice normally we've been just maybe divided in the center. I don't like to... I don't like to run a bunch of lines all together, so I split this into threes. Uh, this will also give us some strength over here in the corner where our hanger is going to be. Because uh, this ball that's going to go in here is pretty heavy. It probably weighs maybe, I don't know, half a pound or so. Probably maybe eight, eight ounces or so. It's pretty heavy. So we're going to go with three across the top here. And so what we're going to do to get ready to go here, we're going to go with you came down the sides here. And uh, that'll be these two here. That's these two guys right here. And then if you watch some of my other videos or if you watch the one on how to make a, a hanger from a cotter pin, uh, we're going we're gonna to make some cotter pins real quick to go right in here. And I'll show you how to do that again. I know you guys have probably have seen this a bunch, but this is how we do this. You take your cotter pin, put your long nose pliers in here, and then you take a little piece of brass tube, and it's 3 30 seconds across the opening right here. And you'll slide it on the longest leg here. Slide it up and you pull it out here to 90 degrees. Just like that. I'll do all three of them here real quick. So you get, get the idea here. Now this will be hidden underneath the cave so you never see these. So all you're going to see is the little loop coming out on the top. So it makes a nice solid hanger. They're very strong. Uh, if these things are going to go outside and go in the wind, uh, you don't have to be worried about your your leaded glass piece falling off and getting broken. Um, I'm sorry to get off the camera there. Here we go. Okay. So now on our header glass here, to accommodate this leg, if you notice right here, I've ground this back a little bit. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's just a very little bit. So this hanger is going to fit right in here like this. And the reason for grinding it back here is I want this width and this width to stay the same. There's one little problem right here. And if you see it, it's this little bit hanging down right here. That will create a problem when our next piece of glass goes in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our long nose pliers and... Uh, most long nose pliers have a side cutter on them. It looks like this. Uh, if you just take, and it's about a quarter of an inch across here, if you just take this down leg, stick it in here until it comes through the, until you see it right here, take it off and just take and cut it, cut the, cut the down leg back a quarter of an inch. And that'll get rid of that problem for us. If you don't do that, like I said, it'll interfere with another piece of glass and then you've got a problem. So the way this hanger works is we're going to take our cross piece here now. This is the one that goes on the header. And you know we've cut it, we notice we've cut a V in here. These also have been cut on a 45 to match the 45s for these. Uh, this is going to slide inside here like that. And then we're going to take this one here. And it's going to go inside here, bring that down, and we're going to take us some pins, and we're just taking pin our U came here. This one here comes down here, goes right in here like that. So then this first piece of header glass is going to go right in here, just like that. If you want to use a couple of little pieces of our old you came you can do that and pin it if you if you don't want things to kind of get away from you then we got some h came cut here bring this over here put this right here and then this one here will be the final one that goes in here slides in there like that then we can take this out and we're going to take a piece of H cane. We're going to run it across here like that. Then we can come back in here and we can pin it again right against us here. So that gives us our header. Here's our 
Here's our hanger right here. So this leg's running back underneath here, so it's not going to be able to get out of there. So now here, we're going to run our first piece of our colored glass across here. But in the corners here, I'm going to put a piece of iridescent ripple glass right here. It's this little one right here. And it's going to go right in here like this. And I'm going to run a down piece all the way down like that. Then it's going to have our piece. Uh, this one here, I cut it out of one piece of glass, so I've marked it. So when I put it back together, it'll be together. So it'll be the same way as I cut it. So uh, we don't we don't cross that up. We don't have a situation where we do this because that doesn't look quite as nice as have them matched up. So kind of be aware of that when you're doing it. Sometimes you only have a certain amount of glass. You can't get away with that. But uh, try to try to keep them together if you can, because it gives you a better overall look to your job. So this is going to go in here like this. We have another piece of H came to come down here. This one here is going to go over here like this. Push it in here like that. I'm going to take a piece of U came. I'm going to stick it right here and I'm going to pin this. And then I'm going to take another piece of down piece right here. And I'm leaving these a little bit long right here because we, when we start to make our circle here, this may grow a little bit. Like I said before, this is the only part that we need a pattern for. The rest of this we just says have cut and stacked to whatever size that uh, I thought I could fit in here. So this one here is going to go down here like this. And then we're going to take and we'll put our little piece of iridescent glass in here like that. That fits just like that. And then we'll come back, we'll take this out. And we'll put a piece of H came in here like that. And we'll take and pin it here real quick like that. So we're going to need to put a little piece of H came right here. And we're going to come in here with one of our downside pieces. Here again, I'm leaving these a little bit long till I find out where this intersection of this one here is going because I want to make this one and this intersection the same. And uh, those little details kind of help your uh, project um, look a little nicer if you see all these things nice and running along. So we just leave that a little bit long. And when we when we put these uh, these two pieces in here, where these ever end here, that's where we'll end this, and then we'll go ahead and fill this on out. So we can do that like that. We can just take and pin it. Come down the other side here. We'll put our pin back in here. I usually like to pin this stuff so that it doesn't get away from me, so I don't have a bunch of loose pieces running around. Put this piece of H came in here. Just use my pen to help guide where it goes. Slide that down, push that over. Okay, now uh, I put some little blue ones in here. Uh, they're iridescent also. Uh, you could do anything you wanted to around this little border, or you could leave this border out all together and bring this big border over to here and then put just this in here. So uh, I, for this some reason, I kind of like to put in some a little bit of a difficult uh, area here so it makes the uh, project uh, uh, a little little uh, tougher to do so putting these little tiny pieces in here certainly create that problem so the little blue one's going to go in here like this these are just a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch they're about five sixteenths of an inch that goes in there like that we're going to have a down piece right here here again i'm leaving it just a little bit long until we find out where how, where this makes us end up. Have a little tiny piece of H came right here, a little, little bitty one. That's going to go in there. As you can see, that it wanted to tip over. Just take your stick pin and turn it back over. Add another piece of your down glass. Take this one out. Sometimes these want to turn on their side, so keep an eye on them. Here we go, just like that. Take and pin it. I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing here. We're gonna put this little blue one in here. This 
set it in there like that. I'm gonna have a little tiny piece of H came in here. Move this out of the way and we'll bring down our piece of iridescent. Stick our down piece in here. Just like that. And now this top piece is gonna slide down between these two. Just like that. I'm gonna pin it here after I get behind it here. And it'll come on down here. Make sure you're make sure you're up into the into the slot there. If it gets if it gets like it's going tight, you probably have dropped down on the edge of your came, so be careful with that. So that slides in there like that, and then we'll drop a piece of H came on here. Just like that. And that gets us started. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go offline. I'm going to cut these four pieces here. Uh, they're going to be they're going to be cut using this pattern right here. I'll just take a pair of scissors, uh, just regular scissors, cut these out, and uh, then we'll cut them. And uh, I've got arrows on them here, so when I put them when I put them on my glass, so when I put them on my glass, I'm going to put them all facing up, so that so that they'll be running up as we go along here. Same as this glass here is facing up. So it just uh, give us a little nicer job rather than to have some going, some going this way. Although this is swirly, you probably would never notice if you turned one sideways. But we're gonna we're gonna cut them by the grain, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, these little legs here are uh, about three eighths of an inch. Uh, they're gonna be a little bit tough because we're gonna do this inner circle right here. So uh, when we do that, we're gonna be real careful. We'll probably. Uh, cut the inner circle and leave this a little bit wide here and then come back and trim it to the size we want. Uh, the reason for that is uh, if these get too narrow, uh, it's going to be difficult to pop this out of here uh, without that breaking. So uh, keep that in mind when you're cutting. Uh, we might even go offline or come back online and show you how we're going to cut those. So uh, we'll uh, take a look at it when we get to that point. All right, we'll be back in a minute and we'll get ready to cut our pieces to go around our circle. All right, well, I wanted to come back on here real quick and show you, uh, here's our pattern right here. Uh, even though even though we're, we're using this pattern, this is the good side of the glass or the pretty side of the glass, uh, but I'm just leaving it face up. If you, if you were, if this were not going to be all the exact same size, you'd want to turn this pattern over, otherwise the, the piece will be upside down. But I want to show you what we're going to do here. Uh, because of these legs right here, I wanted to show you how we're going to uh, do that. Um, if you use your running pliers on here, you'll probably break that leg off. So, so I'm going to show you what we're going to do. And, and uh, you might try this. You, you may or may not ever have seen this. So it's kind of a really old, old technique. We we'll take and cut this. Take our running pliers. We'll snap it. Then we're going to do, we're going to take, see if I can keep this in the camera here. We're going to take our cutter, our glass cutter. We're going to go right around the inside edge here. Right out the end. Then we're going to take an old fashioned Fletcher glass cutter. It has a ball on the end of it here. And this has a couple little flat areas here. This gives a rocking motion up and down. And we're going to go underneath here, right on where the right where the score line is. And we're going to take and we're going to tap this. And there, the piece falls out. Okay. We're just going to take our grinder and just touch that up a little bit, and we'll have our piece. So. Uh, if you were to try your running pliers on that, uh, I'm about 70% sure that you'd probably break this leg right here. So uh, the tapping method works very nice. If you've never have seen that before, it's kind of uh, easy to use and uh, you might give it a try. Uh, it works very nice for, for inner circles. And uh, sometimes when you have really tight inner circles, 
uh, you're going to have to use a tapping method to get them out of there or use a glass saw or uh, maybe make a different uh, different cut so that you don't have that situation. All right, well, we're back. We got our uh, pieces all cut up here to fill in this area right here. So from here, uh, I'll show you how we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to take this pin out right here and we'll take our number two piece and we're going to set it in here. Slide it in just like that. Then we're going to take a piece of our you came here stick it in here and just hold that up against there like that then we're going to take our number one piece here we take and stick it in here push it in here again we'll take a little piece of you came stick it in here hold that and you probably never thought you'd be using tweezers when you're doing leaded glass but you are this little guy here is going to go right in here And so he's going to go right in there, like that. Okay, so from here now, we're going to put in our U-came. You see, we've, we've folded it so that the smooth side's in. So that when, we, when this goes together, it'll give us a nice clean seam inside here. We're going to put the solder joint, when we put these two together, right here at this break right here. So to make this, uh, you, you kind of search around. This, this is a... Uh, three and uh, three and seventy almost four inches across so uh, I happened to find a coaster at the house and so I took and put it around here and I did the initial bend with this as you can see it's turned out to be a, just a little bit smaller but anyway that gives us the initial size and from there we can go ahead and fit it uh, right here if you notice these are cut on an angle going back because when it comes together it does this situations so anyway we're going to set this in here, just like this. Pull this out, and you need to you need to put your uh, pins and stuff in here quite frequently because all of this can really get away from you if you're not careful. Okay, so this is going to go down like this. We're going to rotate this so when this comes back together, it's going to be right on that joint. So when we solder that, you won't see that joint at all. So now we're going to take a couple of stick pins. We're going to push them in here to hold this in tight. And now we're going to take these two guys out here. And now we're going to use some really teeny ones. This is all the bigger they are right here. They're about a, uh, not even an eighth of an inch. They're going to, they're going to sit in here. It's a little bit of a trick to get it in here because this wants to keep turning over. Sit in there like that. Push it back in. We're going to take our number four piece. Sit it in here. Slide it down. We're going to take a piece of you came on the back here. We're going to take and hold it. And then we have another little tiny piece here. This one here, it's going to go in here. Sit it down in here. Like that. And then we're going to take number three here. I'm going to stick it in here. Slide this in. Take and line them up right where you want them. Just like that. Pull this out. And we're going to take this little guy right here. He's going to go right in the top here, right where the slot is here. Just like that. And then we're going to close it up with a piece of H came. I'm going to put our little block in here. We'll pull these guys out for right now. And we're going to take our square and we're going to be sure this is square. Right there is where we want it. So we're taking pin it. Keep checking it for the squareness so it comes out looking nice. Okay, so then when we solder this, we'll solder it right here and you won't be able to see where this is at. 
So we'll put a couple more little pins in here to hold this around here. I've kept these pieces right here, these, these two pieces right here, I've kept them a little bit long because I, when you're working with these circles like this, sometimes this grows or it gets a little bit smaller. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to cut them off and then have them too short. Our little blue pieces, we're going to fit right in here to match up with this. And then we'll put our final H came across. We'll put our back pieces in here and it'll be all done. Then we'll go back and we'll solder. We'll cut these off to be the right length also. So when you're, when you're kind of doing the cut and stack, you kind of leave your lead a little bit longer because, uh, you're not following a pattern really you have no pieces to pattern pieces to follow so it has a tendency to grow and it grows because all of the came has a heart like this one here has a 32nd of a heart so every time you stack a little piece of h came in here you're increasing the size of your project every time so uh, keep that in mind if you're going to try this cut and stack idea uh, i like it because first of all i hate to cut straight pieces using a little paper uh, paper pattern. Uh, what I usually do is I use some kind of a jig to do it with. So for instance, for these right here, I've taken a little piece of my form wood right here, and I use that as a guide, put it on my glass and then run my glass cutter by to cut these little thin ones. Uh, for this one here, these coming down here, if you watch my real early videos, you saw that we use this aluminum angle. I use it like a, like a ruler. It's a half an inch across here, three quarters across here. And I've taped a uh, one inch ruler onto it, which is, this one here is not quite an eighth of an inch thick. So that creates a straight cut right here for these guys here, rather than trying to just go ahead and, and eyeball it or take a cut. Because when you put these together, uh, these all have to be almost perfect to fit in here because otherwise um, you're not going to be able to slide them down in there. And then for the uh, other little piece that we're working with, oh, a story, I gave you a story tell. Uh, these guys right here, they're cut with a combination here. I've got a piece of my form with and I have another one of these uh, one inch rulers. Um, here again, they're not quite an eighth of an inch. They're just a little bit under. So that creates the width here. And uh, so it just makes it easier so that I can just put this down. I can just run my cutter right along here and uh, you get a nice straight cut every time. You can just take it on your grinder really lightly and touch up any sharp edges and it'll just slide right in the, where, you're, where you're working. So we'll go ahead and uh, finish up this piece right here. Uh, if you did notice, uh, we added a couple little pieces here. Uh, I told you that we were limited, really limited on, a, on how much glass we had. Well, these guys here, to cut them directionally, to make them go the right direction, took up more glass than I thought. So to run the longer ones in here, I don't have enough glass to make them go up and down. So what we did, we split this into thirds. And uh, I left these two long intentionally. Uh, so when we get up here to the top here, uh, we'll match up with the uh, where our little blue one stops. If this one for some reason is a little bit longer than these two, what we'll do, we'll slide this one out and we'll put the long one in the middle here. And that's a good way to hide uh, something that's not, you know, you like to have these all three equal. Sometimes you just can't get that the way you want. So if this one's like an eighth of an inch or so longer than these two, these two here and these two here are exactly the same size. So when we make this final cut, if this one's a little bit longer than one of these, we'll slide this one out here, we'll replace this one and then move this one, this one here back up here. And that way, uh, the two larger ones uh, by an eighth of an inch will be sitting here. But we don't know if that's gonna be the case yet because we won't know until we put in our, our little blue one right here and we run our H came across there. That'll tell us where we want to cut that. So we'll come back and uh, we'll uh, make up those pieces and uh, we'll show you how to put them in. And then we'll go ahead and finish it off with our U came on the back. And, uh, and then we'll get ready to solder up and we'll have one of our panels done. So uh, hope you've been following along. Um, this is a project here uh, 
probably if you're just a real beginner, this is going to be a little tough to do because this, this, these inner circle ones are tough. Just to cut the pieces uh, can be tough because you're you're cutting inside here, and uh, that's the toughest cut to make. When you're cutting around the outside, that's pretty easy. But the inside cuts are always uh, hard, and the tighter they get, the harder they are to cut. So uh, you can uh, uh, usually use uh, the tapping method to tap out these little guys. Depends on the glass. Sometimes the glass is real brittle, and when it's real brittle, uh, there's not a lot you can do with it because it just keeps wanting to shatter and you're, you keep breaking the legs off of it and you'll get frustrated. One thing you can do, if you, uh, if you want to, if you want to use your grinder, you can take your, your nip pliers, your nippers. We talked about these before. Uh, these are the ones that we use these on this, the one we did with the sea glass to create the shapes. Uh, they have two cutting wheels on here. They don't come right together, but they pinch the glass and make it pop. Uh, if, you, if you're afraid to try to cut these inside ones uh, yourself, you can take your nippers and kind of chew away at it here until you get down within about an eighth of an inch of where your pattern is. And then you can go ahead and you can grind that back. If you don't have a grinder, you're going to probably be in trouble trying to make this project because you need to be able to grind these smooth. So anyway, that's just another couple little tricks to do there. End piece put in here with our little blue chips here. Uh, these are little blue iridescent. Make sure that iridescent side's sticking up. So now we talked about these guys that we left long here. So now we know where to, where to cut them off. So what we'll do, I marked them right here. Uh, we'll pull these out and we'll just take and push them out of here. And I'll take it over real quick and I'll take and cut this. And uh, then when I come back, we'll stick them in here and then we'll finish it all off and we'll get ready to go ahead and solder it. So I just wanted to show you how that's going to work out. Uh, as it turned out, uh, we talked about if this was longer, we'd stick it in the middle. Well, it turned out to be exactly the same size as these. So uh, apparently our thirds worked out uh, just as we had planned. So anyway, I'll go ahead and offline. I'll cut those real quick and stick them in there. And then we'll go ahead and we'll finish up this uh, backside and, and then we'll get ready to solder it. Okay, well, I'm back. I got these cut down now, and we got our little pieces of H came in here. So here again, our bottom piece, you notice here, I marked it again. This is out of one piece. I cut it in two. We want it to line up, so I've marked it. Here again, uh, it goes like this. As I said before, uh, you don't, if you can avoid it, you don't want to turn it around and make it go like this uh, because that doesn't look quite as nice. So uh, if you, it depends on if you have enough glass to do that. So uh, that works out pretty good. So the last thing we have to do, remember on our cut and stack thing, we left these long and here's, so now we're going to take and we're going to insert this last piece right in here. And I'm just going to take a piece of, you came here, just going to slide it in here and that's going to tell me exactly where to cut this. So I can just take and mark this right here. And I just take my dikes, go up on end, cut it this piece here we'll go we'll take we'll take and stick this in here take and pin it need a piece of h came to go down here it'll, it'll be the size that it goes in here because of the u came on the outside edge this one here will fit in here like this like that here, we'll just take another piece of you came here and stick it in here. Shows me where to cut this right here. Push it back out. Take my dikes straight up and down. Give it a trim. Push this back in. Okay, now. These two little pieces that go in here, that's, they're going to be our iridescent pieces. They're going to come in here like this. Going to come down right like that. And this one here comes down here like that. 
So that finishes off our panel. Now across the back here, uh, we're just taking and put our piece of uh, U came. So I thought I had one cut, apparently not. So we'll get one out and we'll cut it. So uh, I'm gonna take our U came. It's gonna go between these two points right here. Just take and mark it. And we'll cut it right on the line here. Fit it in here, see if that's what we want. It looks like it. Ah, uh, just a little bit long. There we go, fits in nice. Find a piece of wood here that's a little bit closer to the size we want. There we go. That one will do it. Now we'll take our square again. And we'll just check it out here, make sure we're square. Looks like we're going to be good right there. You can give it just a little bit of a tap if you need to. Not much. You want to be... You don't be tapping around in this too much because these uh, ones, the, the ones that goes around the around the edges here, these little edges here are pretty fragile. So you don't want to go banging on those too much because they'll create a, a crack in them. So we want to want to be careful not to do that. All right. So there's our finished uh, panel. Make sure all the edges are pulled down here. I usually just take and use a block of wood or my little tool here and pull those down. Uh, everything looks good here. All this is in here nice and tight. So what we'll do, I'll go offline and I will go ahead and uh, uh, get my siren iron up to temperature and we'll come back and we'll show you how to solder this. And uh, then when we get done, we're going to put our cleat, which will go across the top on the other side. It's just going to be a piece of H came laid on the side. And we'll put our little tab in the bottom here to hold our bottom for our reflective light. And uh, that panel will be done. So we all right, we've got our siren iron all warmed up now. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and we're gonna take a small stainless steel brush here. And we're just gonna go over our joints real quickly. That knocks off any oxidation that may have formed on our lead from our hands, our fingerprints, uh, any little bit of oil that's on them. And uh, it helps the solder to flow just a little bit smoother. Uh, so we just go over each joint real quick. And then we'll go ahead, we'll flux them up, and then we'll go from there. So I'm using a uh, liquid flux here. This is, uh, uh, it's water soluble, so it doesn't smoke, has no odor to it, and it works nice. And I'm using a 60-40 solder. I usually like to just cut 10 or 12 inches off my roll, and I like to hold my solder down flat when I solder against it. So uh, we'll show you that when we get ready to go. So we're just taking, we're going to flux up some of our joints right here. So we'll get that all taken care of here. And soldering is one of those techniques where you just have to find your technique that works best for you. Find a solder flux and solder that, uh, that you like. Uh, the 6040 melts at a, at a a little bit lower temperature than the 5050 uh, solder, so I like that uh, because uh, you have to be careful that you don't get your iron too hot because you'll melt your cane too. So keep that in mind. I always take my iron and I have a little piece of old U came right here, and I always take and run it over here just real quick like this because I want to be sure that it doesn't have a heat spike. Sometimes, sometimes depending on the voltage here at the house, uh, you, may, you may get a, a, a little bit higher voltage and sometimes your iron will be a little bit hotter. As soon as you touch your lead, you melt it and then you kind of got a problem before you ever get started. So kind of just check that out. Then I'm going to take my solder. I'm going to take and I'm just going to tend the iron just a little bit, just like that. And then I'm going to start right here and just going to go on the, on the intersection like here, take about an eighth of an inch off the end of your solder. Just push it straight down and just let it go just like that. Here again, right here. That one there didn't get quite done. That one, there we go. 
And by taking about a sixteenth of an inch off on these that are just uh, singles like this one, uh, you get a nice bead every time. And I try to make them all as close to being the same as possible. You're always going to have one that will be a little bit bigger. Now this one here kind of sucked in right here, so we'll just give it just a little bit more. Come down here on the edge. And you just move along. Like I say, uh, after you do this for a while, you develop your own technique for soldering. And uh, you'll uh, find something that works good for you. Okay, here again, then on the intersection here, just take about an eighth of an inch off. Go right across the top of it there. Here again, eighth of an inch. And let it flow all the way. I had a couple of questions people asked. They wanted to know if you could do this with the copper foil, and the answer to that is certainly yes. Uh, if you do the copper foil, uh, the only problem that I see is that uh, is the rigidity of it along the edges here. You're gonna, you almost need to go ahead and line it with, uh, with with your lead came to give you some rigidity here. Because if you just take and tin the edges of your copper foil, it's not going to be very strong. And uh, if these go outside uh, in the wind and so forth, you're liable to have a situation where they don't hold up very well. So that would be the only thing I kind of want to keep an eye on. Uh, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll notice that uh, there's a couple of them there where we've actually, well, there's, actually there's three of them that we've actually married the uh, lead came and the copper foil together on some of the projects. The sea glass one, we did that on. And the two with the, uh, with the flowers on them, the one with the modern flower, the one with the pink flower, those have all uh, been copper foiled. And then they've also been... Uh, uh, use lead came on them so uh, you can take a look and see what the, what they look like all right we're almost down to the end here all right this is our where where we join this so you'll see this is going to disappear now people are not going to know where they where we now they're not going to know where we made that circle end right there. Uh, so go over uh, your project real close here. Make sure we got everybody soldered. We're going to pull these pins out of here. And I got a little washcloth here. Just going to knock off some of the flux. Here again, it's water soluble. So after we get this all uh, soldered on the other side, uh, we'll, go, uh, we'll go put it in a, a little tub of water with... Uh, about four or five drops of Dawn liquid uh, dishwasher soap, and we're taking, we'll take and uh, clean it up real good, and it'll make the glass really shine. So there's our project with the one side done. I'll go offline and solder the back side, uh, and uh, then we'll come back and we'll put the bottom on it. We'll put our cleat across the top here, and we'll go from there. So here's our here's our first panel. It's going to show you what it's going to look like. I think it should come out really nice. Here's the back side of it. We'll go ahead and get that soldered up. And then when we come back, uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be done with this panel after we get the, uh, the, the cleat's going to go right across the bottom back here. And then we'll put the little tab on the bottom here to hold. And we're going to hold a piece of uh, opaque white glass in the bottom here to create a reflective as the, as the uh, light shines through it. So anyway, that's how it's going to look. I want to jump back in here real quick before we solder up this backside. There's a couple of things uh, that if you did, this is the first one of these you've watched. Uh, I said this on every one of them, but uh, just to give you a reminder, uh, down the long edge here on both sides, don't solder any of these here because we're going to set the other panels in here on an angle. And if you solder them, and there's a little blob of solder along the line here, it'll push that away and we'll get a gap in our, in our, uh, edge so we don't want to do that and then right here across here this one right here we're not going to solder that one because our cleat is going to go in here and the cleat is basically a piece of H came it's going to be sitting on the edge right here if you solder that when you put this on here it'll be it'll be raised up and it's difficult to get a nice solder uh, mark or bead along the bottom here so just keep that in mind 
nothing on the edges and across the cross piece right here. Uh, don't solder that until we get ready to put our cleat on. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention so you don't get it all soldered up and you got the edges all done. And then when you put it back together, it's get, the, the sides go like this because it's got all these little bubbles on it. So we'll be back now. We'll solder that up and we'll get the ready to put the cleat and the uh, bottom on it. Okay, we're back. We got the backside all soldered up. So now it's time we're going to put our cleat on here. And uh, that'll be to, to hold the shelf for our solar lights up here in the top. So I'm just going to turn this on the side here and put this under here to help support it. Get this where you guys can see it here. And the cleat, like I said, is just made out of a piece of H cane. It's going to go right in here on its edge like this. And I'm going to hold it there with a pair of medical clamps. You could use an alligator clip, uh, long nose pliers, whatever you got that you could hold on to this with. And I'm just going to set it in here like this. Right against that, I'm going to just take my clamp. I'm going to just clamp it like that. And we'll take it, we'll flex this area right here. And we're going to flex this area right here. And we'll set this right in there like that. And right on the edge of my tip of my soldering iron, if you see it's got just a little bubble of solder, we're going to take that, stick it in between these two and let it flow off. And when it flows off, it, it attaches those two pieces of H came together. And then we can just take here and we just take our iron in between them here. And we just solder this shut all the way along here. All right. Now I'm going to turn this around and right back here where we didn't solder this one here. I'm just going to put a little bit of solder on my iron. Just hold it in here and let it flow away. There we go. Just like that. And as I said before, these edges right here are quite sharp. So I usually just take my dikes and I'm just going to cut these back just a little bit just to, so you don't get hooked up on them. Okay, like that. Now, we've got a couple of things to do here. We've got to close up this little gap right here. We're going to solder around our hanger. And these bottoms got a problem here. What are we going to do with these? Uh, we don't want to leave this gap in here. We don't want to just cut that off straight and leave a gap in there. Uh, I want to fill it in. I'm going to take it offline on a piece of 80 grit sandpaper and knock them down smooth. We've done that on the other ones, but we'll show you one more time how to do this. Uh, Normally, these are a little bit longer than that, but uh, this worked out just fine. We'll just take and cut them in here. Cut them on a little bit of an angle or a little bit to a point like that. And I'm taking on the edge of my workbench. And I'm bending that over right against it like that. So it helps plug up that hole here. I'm going to take and push this in here just a little bit. So we'll do that again here. We're taking, cut it here, cut it here, and then cut it back here. You can choose just to cut those off straight if you want to. Uh, you can also choose to cut them off straight and then fool around and try to try to plug up that gap with solder. Uh, just by bending this little piece over into there, it cuts down to the amount of solder that you have to try to get in there. So I'm going to take that point, I'm going to set it on my bench, roll it over. And that's the outcome right here. See, it closed that off. Now, instead of having a big gaping hole, I just got a couple little holes to desolder right there. Okay, if you've watched my other videos, I, I to hold this up for me, I use a, a drill vise. And uh, so we'll bring that over here and get it into play here. And we're going to take and we're going to insert our panel down in here. Going to tighten that up, but not real tight. We don't want to break our glass. Okay, and we're going to take and we're going to put a little flux right here in the corners. We're going to take our soldering iron on its edge. Just let it flow away here. Just like that. Over here in this one here. See if we're still on the camera here. Okay. Now this side here 
we're going to take right here, we're going to, we're going to solder that in. I'm going to set this just on a little bit of an angle right here. Here again, don't tighten it too tight. We don't want to be taking it all apart to fix our uh, broken glass if we break it. Okay, and I'm just going to close this off right here. Just like that. And then, what I'm going to do here, let's move this over here just a little bit here. Get this over here so you can see it. I'm going to take this and set it in here on an angle. Tighten it up a little bit. And I'm going to flux around my cotter pin or my hanger here. And then I'm going to take my iron let's get this over just a little bit more so you can see it here. I'm going to take my iron and I'm just going to take and tin it just like that. And I'm going to just set it right in here and I'm just going to hold it here until it flows off the iron just like that. And that sucks in around the cotter pin so it holds it tight that I can turn it over on this side. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my iron, just put a little tin on it. I'm going to hold it right in here. Just let it flow away, fill up that gap. And there we go. That hanger is not going to go anywhere for us. So I'm going to go offline. Like I said, I'm going to take these on a 80 grit sandpaper. I'm going to knock the edges down all smooth. I'm going to take a, a little emery board and chamfer the edges of them to make it nice and smooth and round. And then when we come back, we'll put our plate on the bottom and then this panel will be all done. So we'll be back in a second here. Okay, we're back here. So now we've knocked all these edges down smooth. I'm going to take an emery board. This is a, has a, a hundred grit on one side 100 and 180 on this. I'm going to take the 80, 180 side and I'm just going to take and use it like a file. I'm just going to take and smooth these up a little bit. I just like to do that because uh, it finishes the job off nice. The fact that we're putting these little scratches and so forth, don't worry about that. In a couple, three weeks, uh, they will have all oxidized back to the gray as of the lead. So you won't even notice that you've done this to it. Uh, but you won't have any sharp edges sticking out. So this just kind of helps finish up the project. In here, you can get around the corner here just a little bit. And we'll do this one right here. Just a little bit of extra time to take and do that, but it uh, gives the finished product a nice look to it. Okay, so I'm going to uh, uh, make our little cleats right now to go in here. And then from there, uh, we'll solder it on and we'll be done with that panel. Okay, we're back. We're ready to put our, uh, our little plate on the bottom here for our, it's going to go right on here for our, to hold our bottom in. Request, I've had a couple of people ask me, how do I make these little guys? They're made out of galvanized tin. It's a real thin material. And uh, you find it at the hardware store, just back where they have all the ducking for air conditioning, heating, plumbing, that type of thing. And uh, you want to be careful with it, though, because it's quite sharp. So uh, keep that in mind. So to, if, if you're interested in how these are made, uh, just use a pair of tin snips. Look like this. And I've marked it off here. This is about five-eighths of an inch. And I just take and cut these right along the line here. And here again, be careful with this because it's very sharp. And so you want to just cut right, right on the line here. Roll that up if it gets in the way. Okay, you take your little strip right here and just take and flatten it back out with your fingers. Here again, being careful not to get on the corners there because they're real sharp. 
get it flattened out like that. And then just take and cut it into your pieces. These are about an inch and an eighth wide. And I just take and cut them here. Then what I do on the corners here, I just take my tin snips and I just cut just a little bit of the corner off here, like that. Then I take the same emery board that I was used earlier, and I just take and go over the edges a real a little bit and kind of knock them down to be rounded. I don't want to leave them with that sharp edge. Even though this is going to have that plate on top of it, the chances of somebody getting hooked on it are pretty slim. We don't want to take a chance. Uh, especially if you're going to put these in a, in a craft show or something where you're going to sell them. You want, to, you want to be sure that you don't have something on there that somebody could get hurt on or get cut on and uh, make yourself liable for it. So you want to be got to take care of all these precautions. So that's our piece right here. I'm going to go over the outside edge just real lightly. Just like that. Knock off any sharp edges on it. Okay. All right, now, I know this is going to go off camera, but I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this. Move these ones out of the way. This is going to go on the same size as the same side as our cleat. It's going to fit in here just like this. And we're going to set this in here. We're just going to put it in here at random on the uh, kind of center it here. You can measure it if you want to. Uh, this one here is in the center, so we'll we'll use that as kind of a something to eyeball it with. We're going to take a little piece of our form wood right here. We're going to put it right at the top of our project and a couple a couple pins to pin it. But before we do that, we're going to do something, and this is fairly important. Uh, you want to take and you want to take your pin. And you want to mark along the edge here, right here. Well, you know, I forgot to do something real quick. Uh, sometimes the galvanized doesn't like to solder real good. So uh, before, you, before you get ready to finish up your project and solder this on here, take your emery board and set it down here and rough this area up here a little bit. If you don't do that, sometimes it won't solder real clean and you wonder why this is going on here. So, all right, there we go. Now we're back on track. Okay, sit that down. But before you get ready to solder, take your pen and mark it here. And the reason we're going to mark it here, remember the UK we're using is rounded. It has a crown on it. And as it goes over the crown, if you leave this all the way down here, this little sharp edge will be sticking down below it. So after you get it marked, take and raise this up about an eighth of an inch. And then push it in tight. Take a couple of pins at the top here and pin it. And then take your flux. Flux it up nice. Take your iron. I just take and tin it, set it in here, and just let it go ahead and flow. Just like that. Maybe I'll put a little bit more right here. Here we go. Okay, so that panel is completely done now. We've got our cleat to hold our solar lights. We've got our little tab here to hold, it's gonna hold our uh, opaque white bottom in it for a reflective to bounce back. The reason you kind of like to put the bottom in it, these solar lights are single source. They, they point straight down. Uh, so if, if you don't put something down here, the light just goes out the bottom and you don't get, it starts out fairly bright up here at the top, but as it goes down, it gets dimmer. So by putting the bottom in here, it kind of makes the light bounce back up and it keeps it pretty well illuminated evenly. So uh, keep that in mind when you do that.
All right, so we'll be uh, offline for a little while. We'll go ahead and we're going to make two more of these. And when we come back, we're going to show you how we're going to put this together. So we'll see you in a little while. All right, we're back. We got all three panels done now. So they all came out nice for us. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put them together. And we're going to use our uh, uh, the, the big jig we have here for uh, it's on a 60 degree angle here on the edges. It has a backstop here. So we'll line up all up to the top to here. And uh, the two panels will sit down in the end with solder down between them. So uh, we'll move these out of the way here and we'll put our jig down here. Get it right here where we can see it here. There we go. We're using this bigger one because the little one, uh, these would be hanging off the side. We don't want to do that. We need to support them. So you just take and you put one right here. Then we'll take the next one and it goes right in here. And then what we're, the area we're looking for is right in here. We want to be sure that this area here is lined up with each other. And we're going to do like we did on the other other solar light. We're going to after we're going to we're going to tack solder it here and down here, and then we're going to take it off. And this time I'll turn it on edge and I'll show you. We're going to put our little clips in here because this has this open window in here. These sometimes are not perfectly straight anymore, so uh, we want to pull those edges together because we don't want any gaps between here where the solder will flow through. Also at night the uh, light will come through. So we'll go ahead and we'll take and flux this up. We'll just put flux here and we're going to put some down here. And we're just going to tack solder it here. Take my solder, tin my iron just a little bit. Just put one there and we'll put one right down here at the end. Just like that. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to lift this up. We'll move our jig out of the way here. And I'm going to try to show this to you here on the edge here. If you see right here, there's a gap. There's an air gap right there where the two pieces haven't come together. So what we're going to do, we're going to set this right here. And then we're going to put our clamps on here and they'll pull this in tight. So we've got it on this edge. The clamps I'm going to use, I made these out of... They're made out of paper clips for a big stack of paper. And uh, they look like this. You're probably familiar with these. Uh, when you get them, and you can get these at stationery store, any, any store that, that sells any kind of stationery. When you get them, this little edge right here is rolled over into the here. I just take a screwdriver. I take the screwdriver and I take and... Stick it underneath the rolled edge and bend it up flat. And then I take a pair of flat nose pliers and I pick it up and I bend it back over here to create these little fingers right here. So I don't know if you can see those or not. They're just coming over. And what they do, they're real thin metal. We'll catch them between the glass and the U came here. So we can go, we'll start here with we'll a stick one right in here. And they're quite strong, so they'll pull that, they'll pull those gaps together. And so when we solder them, we won't have any problem with the solder running to bleed through here. So now if I turn this over, if I look real close here on the inside here, I don't see any light coming through whatsoever. So we'll bring our jig back over. Set it in here, and we'll just take these. Uh, we'll just take and set it in here, less, just like this. Okay. Now we'll take and we're going to take and flux up the whole project, just like that. We're going to take our solder. And we'll go ahead and we'll solder up some joints here. All right. That'll do it. Like we've done in the other videos, we're gonna come back here and I'm gonna close this off. I will take and flux it so I don't mess it up. 
just like that. What I mean by closing off, I'm just going to really fill it in here. Like I said before in the other videos, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. There we go. Okay, so now we've got that part done. So now we're going to take it. We're going to turn it over here. I'm just going to set it right here so we can look at it real quick. And we're going to take off our clamps. You could use masking tape, duct tape. If you've got some large rubber bands that are pretty strong, you could pull it around it to pull that in. These clips work really, really nice. Uh, they're a little bit of work to make them, but like I said before, these little fingers go right between the edge of the U came and the glass, and they really pull it tight. So if you're familiar with these, you know how strong they are. Okay, so you see we have no we have no bleed through here whatsoever, so that's what we're looking for. So now we'll pull that one away, and then we'll set this in here like this. And we're going to take our last panel, this one right here. When you do this, be sure, be sure you put the inside in. Don't, don't accidentally stick it in this way, and then when you get it soldered, you realize that this is the, in, this is the outside, and you've soldered it inside. So, so be, don't be in a big hurry. Take your time. Stick it through here. And when you get it down in here, take your time to get them lined up where you want them. Uh, that'll make the job just a little bit better. Here again, we talked about making them all the same size and making them square. This is why we want to do that. See here how nice it's lined up already? It's almost where we want it. So what we're going to do here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to just uh, spot solder down here at the end. We're going to come down here at the end and just do another spot solder. And then we'll pull it out and we'll put our clips on it again. So I've got some uh, solder here. I've got a really long piece. So I'm going to reach in the back side. And I'm going to come through here and I'm just going to solder this right here. Now I'm going to go down here with my iron, solder it right there. Okay. So now we'll slide this out of the way. I'm going to take this out, put it up on edge here again. We'll, I'll do it this way so you can see what we're doing. And I'm going to start with our clips. Let's start right up here at the top and put them in here. This is really pulled away right here. So if you have one that pulls away like that really, really bad, uh, before you get too carried away, I'm going to put my gloves on here so I can squeeze this in real tight. And I'm going to uh, hold this tight. Remember, we put one little solder joint right here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but see there's a gap right in here. And we don't want to close that up. Uh, the clips are going to have a little trouble with that. So what we're going to do, we're going to leave it down like this. And I'm just going to take my iron underneath here and go on that seam. And at the same time, I'm going to push this together with my fingers. And uh, we'll take and we'll re-solder this right here. Sometimes that happens, so keep an eye out on all this stuff. Okay, so that closed that up now. If you look real close, you can't see that that has a gap in it now. We'll go ahead and clamp it down. And we'll get one more. Put these down. We bring in our project, set it back into our jig here. And here again, we're going to take and we'll flux inside of it all the way down the bottom. And we'll reach inside. And we'll take and we'll solder up our joints here. I 
All right. Put one more right down here. Come back down here. And I'll tell you, I'll show you what we're going to do here. Uh, let me pull this in here and I'll sit on an angle. And when I when I talk about filling this in here, I'll show you what I'm talking about right here. Put this up on an angle right here. So this is the area right here where we're going to fill it in. So I'm just going to reach through here, make sure it's fluxed. So I'm going to reach through here. I'm just going to fill that in solid. Okay, like we've done on some of the other videos here, to do this last side right here, uh, we're going to take the camera down. I'll get my wife out here to help me. And uh, we'll take and we'll solder this last one together so uh, she'll get the camera where we can look through here and see what we're doing. So before we do that, though, we're going to take this up and we're going to pull our clips off here again. Pull it around here. And this is what we're looking for here again, that we want this nice and clean right here on the seam. So uh, keep an eye on that when we start to do that. Okay, so we'll go off camera real quick. I'll go get my helper. And uh, when we come back, we'll show you how we're going to do this other one. All right, so we got the third panel down here. Here's where we're going to solder right here. So I've got it set in here. I'm holding it from the inside right there. And I'm just going to take and uh, tack solder this right here to hold that where I want it. And then I'm going to come down to the other end here. I'm going to here again, I'm going to tin my iron just a little bit, just like that. I'm going to come down here to the end and I'm holding this tight here. And I'm going to take and get a little solder bead right here at the end. There we go. Okay, now we're going to pull this out and move our jig out of the way. And we're going to rotate this over just like this. And we're going to put our clips in here. So if you look real close here, there's a little bit of an air gap right through here. We're going to pull that in tight. So we don't want that to, uh, to have any air come through it and any solder that comes through it. So we'll put, we'll put our clips right here and pull that in tight. Here again, they just clip between the glass and the edge of the U came. Like I said before, you could use some duct tape, masking tape. If you've got some really big rubber bands, you could probably use rubber bands on it. And we'll keep pushing these in here. Okay, so what we've done now, we pulled those all along the, the edge here. So we'll take and we'll turn this back over, we'll bring this back in. And we're just going to set this in here like this. We'll go ahead and flex this whole thing down here. Just like that. And we're going to reach back in here with our siren iron. We're going to reach through here. And we're just going to take and we'll solder this up right here. There we go. I can look through the hole here, so that makes it nice. One more here. I want to put one right here. Okay, and I want to come down to the end here and I put one more way down at the end here.
Okay, and so we'll come down here and then we'll close this back up here. There we go. Okay, we'll pull this back out. We'll take and pull our clamps off. Okay, so there's our project. So here again, nice clean all the way down. So this will be our project here. So our round solar ball, or not solar ball, but our round uh, crystal will be hanging in the middle here. So I left about a half an inch all the way around, so it should hang in here real pretty. Uh, we'll make a top for this one. We're going to make it out of our uh, little galvanized tin, same as we're using to hold our bottom in. Uh, because the ball is fairly heavy. I think I said it was probably weighs about a half a pound. Uh, the other material that we're using, the one from the cutting board for the uh, quilters, uh, I'm not sure that would be strong enough to, to hold it without it starting to sag. So we'll do that. In the bottom here, we're going to do that uh, a piece of white opaque glass again. That will uh, give us a reflection back up. So uh, I think the project ought to be very, very nice when we get it all done. All right, we're back. As you can see here, we have a whole bunch of things. Uh, we're about ready to finish up our project, but there's a couple things we're going to do before we get there. Uh, we're going to put the bottom in it right now. I've marked where this is going to go. I've got just a little tick mark right here and one right here to show us where to line this up. Uh, I'm going to put this on in here with some E6000 right here. I'll put it right here on the tab, so we'll go ahead and do that right now. And so I just could put a little bead across here like this. And this is just a regular piece of white opaque glass. This will give us some reflection back from our uh, solar lights. And since this one's got the holes in it, this makes it pretty easy to put in. I'm just going to take it like this and set it in here like this. Get it over here where you can see it. Like this. And then I'm just going to reach inside. And I'm just going to take and move it up just like that and push it right in place. You can wipe this off if you want to, these little, these little overflows here. They're going to dry clear so nobody will see them anyway, but you can wipe them off if you want to. Like that. And now you can adjust this where you want it. That looks pretty good right there. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to take some pieces of our form wood and I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it on here so it doesn't glue to my work table. So we just stick it just like that. Let's get it over here in the middle here so everybody can see what we're doing here. There we go. So we've got some other pieces here. We've got our chain over here. This is the Campbell 16 gauge jack chain. It's got a small split ring on it with a ball bearing swivel and it's got a larger split ring here to hang it on to whatever you're going to hang it to. Uh, it's an open loop chain. We've talked about this before. Open loop meaning that the loop, you just bend it open with a pair of pliers and, uh, and it'll hook into our, it'll take and hook into our hangers and we'll just close that up when we get ready to do that. Uh, when you're making this whatever link you're going to do it, you don't have to cut it. You can just take and open a link up and take it apart. So that gives you that uh, that part of the project. So we'll put that outside. And of course, it always seems to hook itself up with each other. So there, we'll move that away. But we had some questions about how do we make this thing that goes in the top here. So I told you before, normally we're making it out of a piece of rubberized plastic that uh, this is a, a part of a cutting board for uh, quilters and but it's it's somewhat soft if I was just going to if I was just going to put lights in here this would be fine but because we're going to hang the crystal ball right from the middle here 
we need something that's a little more substantial. So we're going to use a little piece of our galvanized tin. I've cut one here already. This is a the uh, same as we the same as we use for the tabs on the bottom. To cut it, I just use some side cutters here. They're called tin snips. Some people call these Dutchman. Uh, they uh, they make a right hand, a left hand, and a straight cut here. Uh, this one here, I just use a straight cut to cut this. I round the edges of it a little bit, and it's going to fit in here like this. It just drops in there like that. I'm not going to glue it down or anything. The ball will hold it in place there. So what we're going to do here, let's try it again. I, sometimes they're just a little bit different. So find, find the one that you like best. I like that one the best. Okay. Now we're going to drill three holes in here and they're going to be so that the lights can go through and we're going to use a hole saw. I don't know if you're familiar with this or not. This drills a pilot hole and then this will cut the hole. The holes are like one inch. Uh, you put this in a drill press to use this. Uh, I've never tried it in a handheld drill. And since I have a drill press, so we won't be doing that. So uh, we'll go offline and I'll drill these out. But they'll drill through here. And to mark these to where the, uh, where the solar lights are going to go, I uh, use a very scientific method. I take my solar light. <laughs> I take my soldering flux right here. And I put a little dab right on the tip of the light because that's the center of it. And then I just hold it in here against this. Put it down, hold it over here, put it down, hold it over here, and I put it down. And that gives me three little marks right here. And uh, so then I'm going to just take my hand drill here and I'm going to draw a little pilot hole for those three. And so that when I put this on my drill press, I'll take this drill and line it right up in the pilot hole and we'll saw these out. Uh, if you're going to use a hole saw, be sure to get one that uh, handles bimetal. Otherwise, this one here, you can saw wood, plastic, but uh, it has to be a metal one. If you get one just for wood, you'll probably get one hole drilled and it'll be burned up. So be sure to get the right drill if you're going to do that. So I'm going to go offline in a second. I'm going to drill these real quick. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do. All right, we're back. So we drilled our little pilot holes here. So when we get ready to put this on the drill press with our hole saw, we'll use that as a pilot hole to line this up and we'll saw these out. But uh, there's one more little hole we're going to drill. We're going to drill one right in the middle here and that'll be for our hanger to hang our crystal ball with. So I'm going to put this back in here and then I'm going to take our lights and I'm going to set them back in here. And if we've measured this right, they should all fit, which they do, thank goodness. Okay. So then uh, we're going to take a, I don't know if this will fit in there or not. No, we're going to just take a pencil. This is really scientific. We're going to go right down here in the middle. And we're just going to make a little bit of a mark right here. And we'll take this out. So this will be where our, we're going to make our little mark for our, hanger and we're going to use a little tiny cotter pin this one this for this it looks like this I find it here it's this little tiny one right here it's a sixteenth of an inch in diameter it's three quarters of an inch long after we drill this sixteenth inch of hole it'll come in from underneath and we'll bend these legs over here on the top and that'll hold our our crystal ball so here again I'll go offline I'll drill a little sixteenth inch hole I'll come back and we're going to show you how we're going to fix that. Okay, so we're back here. We drew, uh, we drilled our little 16th inch hole right here. <clears throat> so this cotter pin will go in from the back side here through our hole. And that'll create our hanger that we're going to hang our crystal ball by. So that'll be hanging here. These legs will be bent down going sideways. I'm not going to do that until I drill or saw these holes out here because I want this plate to be able to lay flat uh, on a uh, on a backing which will be a, a piece of three quarter inch pine uh, so that I don't drill uh, right directly into my surface on my drill press. So when we come back I'll show you how we're going to fix that. So we'll go offline here real quick. We'll saw out our three holes for our lights 
And then when we come back, uh, we'll show you how to put the cotter pin in, and then we'll be pretty much done with the project. Uh, if you notice here, I put just a little tick mark here along with here, so we'll know that this is where I want it to go. So we'll be back in a second after I get these drilled out. And uh, on this, by the way, when you get ready to drill these, mounted on a piece of wood, I'm gonna use some vice grips to hold this down because whatever you do, when you start to saw these holes, you don't want this to get away from you and start to spin because this is quite sharp. And uh, that's the last thing you want doing is this thing spinning around here. Uh, you could cut yourself real easy. So clamp this down good and tight so it doesn't move when you get ready to saw your holes in here. Uh, you could also probably just drill a smaller, uh, maybe a half inch hole in here with just a regular drill. Here again, clamp it down really, really tight because you don't want it to start to spin on your on your drill press or if you're trying to do it by hand. So we'll be back after we get these sawed out and we'll go from there. All right, we're back. So we went ahead and we sawed out our holes right here. I want to show you this on this board. See, I use a couple vice grips to hold it to the board there because like I said, if this were to hook or get caught and start spinning around, uh, you could hurt yourself really, really bad. So be sure you got it clamped down really well. So what I'll do is uh, I'll take and take uh, these uh, vice grips off here, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to put this little guy in right here. So I'll be back one second. Okay, so we got it off our board now. So now we're going to put our hanger in here. I took my emery board, the same one we used to round, round the corners here, and knocked off any sharp areas that may happen when you uh, saw this. So the cotter pin is going to go right through here, through that little 16th inch hole we drilled. It's going to come through right like that. Push it in there tight. When you get it in tight, we're going to bring our drill vise over and we're going to set this little loop of the cotter pin right in my vise and we're going to take and we're going to tighten it up then we're going to take our tubing again just like we did on the hangers we're going to get on this legs here and we're going to bend these over just like that and you can just take your hammer and go just like that so now There's our hanger that we're going to hang our crystal ball by. On the crystal ball, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some 50-pound monofilament with some crushed tubes. And we're going to put a what they call an, a lobster claw on the end so we can just stick it on here and we'll let it hang down. And we're going to set it so it's right in the middle of our window, our circle that we made here. So I'm going to go offline a little bit and I'm going to spray this with a flat black paint to kind of clean it up a little bit. And when we come back, we'll put it in and uh, we'll show you how we're going to put our monofilament line on and uh, we'll hook our chain on and the job will be done. So, Okay, so we're about ready to finish up our project here. So we got a few little pieces left I just want to give you. I know this one's been running long, but it's uh, pretty complicated with the circles and all that stuff in it. Uh, we talked about the, uh, this is our glass crystal here. I've got a tether on here with a lobster claw on the end of it. So I wanted to show you real quick how this works. These are called crush tubes. These little guys right here. This is a 50 pound monofilament fishing line. So this weighs probably about maybe eight ounces. So it'll certainly be strong enough to hold it. So, and this little uh, claw opens up and it will hook onto our uh, cotter pin that makes our hanger. So this will hang right in the middle of our project. So I'll show you real quick how how the, uh, the uh, crushed tubing works. So you take, you take your monofilament line here and you take your tubing and you put it on the line, whoops. You take your tubing and you put it in on the line like that. And if you wanna do a couple of, to give you some extra protection you can do it like that. So you got two of them on here now. So if we're gonna put a lobster claw on here, you just take and you put this through the, through the hole on the lobster claw. And then you take this, what they call the tag end. This would be this end here, this left over. 
you bring it back around and you feed it back through your tube right here. And this gets to be a little bit tricky, but after you do it for a while, you get the hang of it. Keep it kind of flat against itself. I don't know if you can see this at all, but this is just a nice way. Uh, if you've ever tried to tie monofilament line, you know that it can get to be quite a problem to get a nice knot in it. So anyway, this gives you an idea of what this is going to look like right here. So I'll bring it up tight, close here so you can see it here. So this is our lobster claw. And if we want to draw this up close to it, like that, you can just draw it up real close. Okay. And then what you do is you take a small pair of long nose pliers and you come in here and you do just like it's called. It's called crush tubing. You take and crush it, which locks the two together. And if you're trying to make one that has a little backup, a little insurance on it, you put two of them on it and just move it down a little bit and you take and crush it too. So now your lobster claw is trapped in between the loop that you did here and you take the tag in here just like this and you take and you cut it off maybe just a oh, quarter of an inch or so above the uh, the last crush tubing like that so that's how that's made and then you would take this other tag in and stick it around whatever you're going to hang you put two more crush tubes on there put it together and put them and crush them these are these are found anywhere where they sell uh, jewelry uh, they're used in jewelry making and so forth but they work great for this they're super strong um, and uh, you won't have to try to tie knots into these things so anyway we're going to go ahead and finish this up now so here again our glass crystal we'll take and wipe all the fingerprints off of it here since we've been, we've been handling it and now we're going to take our lobster claw here i'm going to come up here and i'm going to just take the lobster claw and i'm going to open it now it's open and I'm going to take our bottom with our little hook and I'm going to set it right in here like that. Now we've got it tethered to the bottom of our plate for our solar lights. So now we're going to take this whole thing. I'm just going to hold it by the holes and I'm going to set it down inside just exactly like that. Our solar lights will go in top here, like that. Just like that. All right, so here's our project. It's all done now. So uh, we've got it outside in the daylight and uh, we'll just leave it out here a little later on this evening. We'll put some solar lights in it when it gets dark and we'll show you how it looks at nighttime. All right, so it's turned dark out here. So. Here's our solar light at the nighttime, and it's probably only going to get prettier as it gets darker. So, uh, very happy with the outcome. I uh, hope you guys have followed along and enjoyed the video. See you on the next one.